Can you match these Bible heroes with their Bible fathers? I'm Nathan with Kids Enjoying Jesus, and I want to show you a Father's Day Bible lesson that uses a whiteboard and a Bible to teach kids about the greatest father ever. For more ideas to help you share the love and joy of Jesus with kids, visit kidsenjoyingjesus.com. The Bible is the most important, most amazing book of all time, and it tells us about the most important, most amazing father of all time, and I want to tell you about him. But before I do that, I have a list of Bible fathers and some of their kids on this whiteboard, and I want to see if you can match the Bible fathers on this side with the Bible kids on this side. So let's get started. First of all, Moses. Who is his father? You've probably heard about how God used Moses to deliver the people of Israel from slavery in Egypt, and God used amazing miracles to do it. It's an amazing story, but who was his father? Was it Lamech, Nun, Ammon, Abraham, Laban, Mordecai, or Amram? The correct answer is, do 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 ding 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 ding, Amram. Now, Moses probably barely knew his father Amram because Moses was taken away from his parents to live in the palace and be cared for by other people when he was just a baby. So he might not have even known his father at all, but God used him to do amazing things. Next, we have Isaac. Isaac was the promised son that God had promised to give to a father and said that he was gonna give this father a family that would grow huge and this father's family would be used to bring the savior into the world. Isaac was that promised son, but who was his father? The correct answer is, do 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 ding 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 ding, Abraham. God promised Abraham that he would send a son, and that son was Isaac, and God did use him and that family to bring the Savior into the world. Next we have Noah. You've probably heard about Noah and how God used him to build an ark and use that ark to save Noah's family and animals from the flood that God sent to judge the sin of the world. But who was Noah's father? Was it Mordecai, Laban, Ammon, Nun, or Lamech? The correct answer is, doo -doo 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 -doo. ding, 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 it's Lamech. Next we have Leah. Leah is special because she's the great 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 grandma of Jesus Christ. She was part of that family. But who was her father? Leah's father was, who do you think? The correct answer is do 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 ding 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 ding. It's Laban. Now Laban was actually really a sneaky father because Jacob had wanted to marry Rachel, his youngest daughter, but Laban tricked him into marrying Leah instead. Talk about messed up. He was a pretty sneaky father. Next we have Joshua. God used Joshua as an amazing soldier who helped to conquer the promised land, the land that God had promised to give to the people of Israel. But who was his father? Was it Mordecai, Ammon, or Nun? The correct answer is, do 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 ding 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 ding. Joshua is the son of Nun. Next we have Josiah. Josiah became king when he was very young. He was only eight years old when his father died, and he became king, and he was one of the greatest kings Israel ever had. He led the people back to God and helped them worship God all over again, even though they'd been worshiping false gods for a long time. Was his father Mordecai or Ammon? His father was, doo -doo 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 -doo, ding, 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 Ammon. Now, Ammon was actually a very bad father and a very bad king. He was a very wicked man who led the people away from worshiping God. But even though he was that bad of a dad, Josiah, his son, became one of the greatest kings Israel ever had. Last, we have Esther. And this is actually kind of a trick question because the Bible doesn't tell us who Esther's father was. Esther's mother and father died and she was raised by someone else. And that someone else was, have you guessed who it was? <laughs> you only have one option. It's Mordecai. Ding, 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 ding. Esther may not have even known her mother and father. The Bible doesn't tell us, but God used Esther to become the queen of Persia and used her to rescue his people, the Israelites, from being destroyed by an evil enemy. Some of these Bible heroes had good dads. A couple of them had bad dads. And some of them really didn't even have dads at all, or they barely knew their dads. But all of them were used by God to do amazing things because they had an amazing heavenly father, God. God is the greatest father anyone could ever have. He is better than 10 billion of the best dads here on earth all put together. And I wanna tell you why. God's son Jesus came to earth about 2,000 years ago, and while he was here, 
he taught people about God. One day he was teaching people to pray and he told them to pray like this. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Jesus taught that when we pray, we can talk to God like a loving Father. And he doesn't just say God's our Heavenly Father. He said something very special, hallowed be your name. That doesn't mean God's name is hallowed. Hallowed means holy or special or reverenced or honored or treated with extreme respect. What he is saying is God is the greatest, most honored, most holy person of all time. So when we pray to him and talk to him, we should remember that even his name is super special and super amazing because God is the greatest, most amazing, awesome father of all time. And I want to tell you a little bit of why God is the most amazing father of all time. What makes him so much better than all the other fathers that have ever lived? First of all, God is faithful. Faithful means that God always does what he says he will do. God never breaks a promise and he never forgets a promise. Maybe you have a good dad who has made promises but he forgets them or things happen and he's not able to keep them. Maybe you have a father who's broken promises to you and really hurts your feelings. God never does that. There's actually a Bible verse that says, not one of all the Lord's good promises to the house of Israel failed. Every one was fulfilled. That means God keeps every promise he ever makes. We can trust that God is faithful. God is also the best father ever because God is affectionate. Affectionate. Can you say that with me? Affectionate. That's a long fancy word that means loving. God loves you. The Bible says in the book of 1 John, See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. God loves you so much that he wants you to be his child. He loves you with a love better than any father could ever love you with, because his love is perfect, and his love never stops. God is a perfect, loving father. He made you, and he loves you very much. God is also the best father ever, because God is What's that word? God is timeless. That means God is never going to stop. He's never going to be gone. He's always around. He's not controlled by time. He's everywhere all the time. He has no beginning, no end, and he always has time for you. He never runs out of time. He's never too busy for you. He's never too busy to care about you, never too busy to listen to you. God is a timeless father. God is also, what's this word? God is also a holy father. Holy means God is completely set apart from sin and completely perfect. God never thinks, says, or does anything wrong. He's always good all of the time. The Bible says that we are not like that at all. God is holy, but the Bible says that we are different. It says, none is righteous, no, not one. No one understands, no one seeks after God. All of us turn from God and do things our own way and think, say, and do lots of bad things that the Bible calls sin. Because of that, we deserve to be separated from God forever. That's the punishment for sin. We deserve to be far away from him. That's why it's so amazing and so loving that God wants to be our father. Even though we've sinned against him and we're born wanting to sin against him and we deserve to be punished, God wants us to be his children. But God is a holy father. He's completely perfect. He never ever does anything wrong. So our sin separates us from him, but he loves us and wants us to be his children. The Bible tells us something else amazing that makes God the greatest father ever. God is everywhere. God is everywhere. No matter where you go, God is there with you. He will always, always be with you. In fact, there's a promise in the Bible where God says, I will never leave you or forsake you. God can always be with you no matter where you go. Whether you have a dad that lives in your family or you don't have a dad that lives in your family, the Bible says God is everywhere. He's in your home, he's in your school, he's in your church, he's outside, he's in the airport. Where else can you think of that God is? <laughs> Any place you name, God is there because God is a father who is 
everywhere. Everywhere you go, he's been there from the start and he loves you and he wants you to be his child, which is why this last reason is super important. God the Father is a rescuer. He's a rescuer, someone who rescues us from something. Now, what do we need to be rescued from? We need to be rescued from our sin. Sin is a horrible problem that keeps us away from God. And if we die without being rescued from our sin, we will be separated from God in a terrible place of punishment forever. But God is a loving Father who cares about you and wants to rescue you from that sin. So he made a way for you to be saved from sin. The Bible tells us, and we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. God the Father sent God the Son, Jesus, to earth to take the punishment for your sin and mine. Jesus is God the Son, so he's also perfect. He never did anything wrong, but he took the punishment for the things you've done wrong and the things I've done wrong when he let people take him and beat him and hurt him really bad and nail him to a cross where he bled and died to take the punishment for our sin. After Jesus died, he was buried in a tomb and on the third day, God the Father brought him back to life. Jesus is alive and he is in heaven right now as the king of everything. God the Father chose for that to happen so that you and I could be rescued from sin. Because Jesus took the punishment for our sin, we don't have to be separated from God anymore. God is the greatest, most amazing father of all time. You can read the Bible to learn way more ways that God is an amazing father. This isn't all the ways that he's the best father of all time, but it does tell us quite a few of them. Read the Bible to find out more. God wants to be your heavenly father. If you've already believed in Jesus as your savior, God is already your heavenly father. He is faithful, he's affectionate, he loves you. He's timeless, he's with you all the time. He's holy, completely good, he never does anything wrong. He's everywhere, he's always with you, and he's rescued you from sin. You can thank God, your heavenly father, and you can talk to him like your father every single day. If you've never believed in Jesus as your savior from sin, the Bible teaches us that God wants to be your father. The Bible says in the book of John, to all who received him who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. That means that everyone who believes that Jesus really did die and really did come alive again to pay the punishment for sin, they will be saved from sin and become God's child. They won't have to be made far away from God. They won't be separated from God and God will be with them for the rest of their lives to help them get to know him better. And after they die, he'll take them to be with him in his perfect home, heaven, forever and ever. Whether you have a good dad or maybe you don't have a dad in your home at all, God loves you and he wants to be your heavenly father. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. You can also share this video with other people like your dad or anyone else who might be able to use it to share the love and joys of Jesus with kids. For more ideas to help you teach kids, visit kidsenjoyingjesus.com. Happy Father's Day.